There we go. Evening all. It's uh, the eve before Christmas Eve. And it's Rosen Carter doing the JRB. Myself and Bully Boy Carter are looking at my territory pick of St. Louis wrestling. Um, all I've seen, really, is the bits that used to be on the wrestling channel. And I've got three DVDs, but I don't think I've ever watched them, to be fair. I bought them from Peter. Yeah. I've um, not seen much of it, nah. to be honest. It's on a few sort of compilations and things, but, you know, quite a well-respected promotion. Yeah. It was the flagship of the NWA, really, at the start of the NWA. Well, you know, not long after the NWA started. Run by Sam Muchnick, opened in 1959. Um, it all came about when Sam Muchnick was on a plane and he happened to be sat next to the boss of a TV company. All right. He, he got, you know, Sam Muchnick was clearly a wrestling fan and uh, he got talking to this boss man of the TV company who happened to own also the Chase Hotel. So they agreed, right. to, you know, have wrestling in the hotel and it will be filmed for the TV channel. KPLR Channel 11, it was. So, you know, the that was in 1958, and then the following year, it all kicked off. So, you know, all just right. a chance meeting, really. Right place, right time, isn't it? Um, Fucking it, yeah. It wasn't really recognised as a territory as such, because it only ran the TV and monthly shows in either the Keel or the Arena in St. Louis. You know, so it didn't have, like, a regular full-time roster right okay but, yeah you know sam much nickel being part of the nwa could bring the nwa champions in and such but most of the undercard were from central states which was like you know next door i guess it was run by <clears> bob <throat> Gog. um the bob Gog took it over later on you know from central states he, he bought it from uh much Nick. Mm. Um, but the commentator, who was Larry Matasik at the time, didn't like what Bob Gogol was doing because Sam Muchnick didn't like the gimmick so much. He was more real wrestling, sort of man against man, woman against woman kind of thing, using yeah. real names rather than fucking crazy gimmicks or not necessarily real names, but more sensible names. Um, yeah. So, you know, Larry Matasik, it was close to who Sam Muchnick anyway, didn't kind of like what Geigel was doing. So Geigel, so sorry, Larry Matasik got his own kind of, not like wrestling crew together, but got the area in with the WWF. Right, okay. And got, got the WWF, the uh, wrestling at the chase time slot, which seems fucking stupid to me because if Larry Matasik didn't like the way Bob Geigel was doing things because... Sam Muchnick wasn't a gimmick man. All right, then let's give it to the WWF. They've got Hulk Hogan and the Iron Sheik. <laughs> it just yeah. seems fucking baffling, isn't it? What could Bob Geigel have possibly have done that was worse than what fucking WWF was offering? I'm not saying what WWF was offering was bad, but, you know, not Sam Muchnick's cup of tea, clearly. It just didn't make fucking sense, but that was that anyway. Bob Geigel yeah, sold it to Crocker on anyway. Um, You're anyway right. Uh, Bob Geigel sold the promotion to Crockett anyway in the end, the St. Louis right. territory. Um, and by that point, the fucking WWF had taken over anyway, in 83, 84 kind of time. Uh, the TV originally was live on a Saturday night, which must have been revolutionary for 1959. Um, mm -hmm. But later changed, they used to do three at a time then, later on in the 70s, early 70s, they used to do three, three tapings. On a Sunday, championship wise, they recognise the NWA World Champion, the Central States Champion, because I suppose they were getting most of the talent from there. Um, but they they had a bit of a falling out with the Central States title thing when right. Pat O'Connor beat Harley Race in January of '72. But the NWA promoters didn't recognise it as a title change, so Sam Munchnick was pissed off about it because you know Pat O'Connor was in the territory. Mm. Um, 
so he made the, uh, his Missouri State title then to be his sort of regional championship. There was no tag champions ever there, though, in all that period. Oh, was there not? No. Regular tag matches, but no tag champions. Yeah, it's bizarre, that, isn't it? He, he was often, he, you know, I've seen a couple of uh, things written and, you know, people talking about the area and so much, and it was always seen as, I've got a book, actually, Wrestling at the Chase book, um, uh, seen as an honest promoter, which is fucking rare, isn't it? Yeah, in fact, now you mention it, I was reading a bit about him. Uh, what the fuck? What happened? Um, there was there was a show, like, I'm sure it was Sam Muchnick. I'm a sh- million percent sure it was. I read something, it must have been within the past few weeks, and it just, it just stuck with me. There was a show that they were doing, uh, and this is, like, proving how much everyone, like, liked him, because he was doing this show, and... He, he was still <clears throat> if a show's cancelled the wrestlers would still get like paid or something along them mm-hmm. lines right so there was a show that they were doing and it it couldn't go ahead i don't know what it, the weather what it might have been like a snowstorm or something but something prevented the show going on and none of the wrestlers would accept the wage from him because that's how yeah, much they liked him nice man like yeah, yeah, they were like, nah, like, you know what I mean? And they wouldn't have done that for everyone. But, like, nah. because everyone thought that highly of him, they were like, nah, you know what I mean? And now I don't know how much money they're on, but they were like, you know, I'm sure they could have used it, but they were like, nah, just, uh, you know, yeah. like, they didn't want it, which I thought was it's, fucking real real good. It seems like the, the, the nicest of promoters are, are the promoters that haven't done the wrestling. If you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, often they're fucking clueless to wrestling, don't get me wrong. But back then, I'm not talking about now, like fucking, you know, we're not talking Dixie Carter kind of people. But, <laughs> you know, with a reputation like that, he was, he was simply a wrestling fan. Yeah. That, that managed to do a good thing for the area by getting wrestling on TV. You know, without him, what the fuck would wrestling in St. Louis be? There wouldn't be it, so- would there, really? Up until that meeting, that like that chance encounter, had he never done anything involved in wrestling before? Then? Not that, that I could find. No, that's fucking. I could, have, you know, that, I could be wrong. Not that I found in any of the fucking research I've been looking into. Mm, that is bizarre. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we watched an episode apiece. Yeah. I didn't have a date on mine, you know, but I worked it out roughly to about right. eighty-three, purely on the fact of. How Bob Orton looks. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and Rick, Rick Flair was the Rick Flair wasn't on mine, but they were talking about him being NWA champion, and he won it in '92. Uh, sorry, '82. No, he won it in eight, yeah '82 from Dusty, didn't he? And then right. he lost, and then he won it back at the end of '83 at Starcade. So it must have been sort of eight, uh, you know, earlier part of '83. I'd have thought. Well, okay, it. well, this, my episode says it's from the 2nd of August, 81, and there's a Flair promo on it talking about challenging Dusty for the belt. Ah, there we go, then. And this is from August, 81. If the date's right, I'm sure it will be. Yeah. Well, that so, all kind of ties in, then, doesn't it? Yeah. With, with, yeah, so mine must be late 82... Early 83, I'd have guessed. Yeah, you go first. That is yours is first. <laughs> uh, okay. um, what so, did you make of it? In general, what would you fucking... What would you say? You know what, right? Mine was a bit, like, up and down. I liked... I liked the setup. I liked the arena that they do it in. Like, you know, that... Cha- like, you know, wrestling at the chase thing. I, I really like that kind of, like... Cause that's kind of like a studio setup, isn't it? Like, the way it, it's like... Yeah, um... And I love that kind of setup. It, it, there, was, there seemed to be a few in as well. Like, even though it was like that small studio setup, it wasn't, it looked a lot bigger than some of the studio shows I've watched for other companies. 900, this, the, the Chase Room. Yeah. Because it's a lot better, it's a lot bigger than like, you know, the, um, well, the other ones we've watched, you know, we're like a tiny fucking studio. So it's the same kind of feel, but just a much, much bigger, like, you know. 
But um, I, like I, I enjoyed the show that I watched. There's not like um, I think there's what there's four matches on it, and they're all a bit fucking. They're all a bit different. There's like one that's uh, just okay. There's one that I really, really enjoyed, and there's one that's fucking Dorothy to the cotton. But um, you know, like, well, I'll obviously I'll go, go. Like that. I got a little bit, little bit confused in places, and right. I think the book. I don't know quite who was booking it. Whether it was Sam Muchnick that was booking it, but this there's an episode. This this whole episode is on here that I watched, and then there's yeah. like an, another match thrown on the end. That was one from the week after. That was just just happened to be on the same you know YouTube clip, um, right. which was Andy because it kind of rolled on from the week before. But it it all doesn't it just doesn't make sense. So I'll tell you when I get there. But it's just yeah, it's fucking confusing anyway. Uh, okay. Right, what, what ones on yours? Right, okay. So my uh, first match is Gene Lewis. No. <laughs> versus, versus um Tim Leonard. Well, no apparently, right, well, Lewis is the heel, Leonard's the face. Lewis is like the veteran. Leonard is like a young guy who's the announcers are putting him over saying that he's fucking like, you know, got a big future and stuff, but obviously not too much of a big future because we don't know who the fuck he is. But he was like a young rookie going against the fucking grizzled veteran by the looks of it. That's the story they were telling anyway. So um, I run through the match. And this was the best match of the lot, actually. Like three or four four matches, I think there is. Best match of the lot. Like the yeah, perfect... I mean, a lot of time, I mean, I do that. Like, I don't know who the fuck they are. But that, that's not me shitting on them. Because there's no, some fucking exactly. great people out there that are, that are no names, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, it's I quite. Don't mean yeah. Not fucking brilliant. It just means that they weren't at the right place at the right time to be seen, or so. Some of them just didn't even want to travel. Yeah, that that's true, and um, because it a lot of the times, some of my favourite wrestlers, like ever, are only known by a select few people that watch wrestling. Like you know what I mean. So they might, I might mention it to them, and they'll be like, Psh. you know what I mean? Like who the fuck is that? But. To me, he's fucking phenomenal, you know. It's just how it is. So these two guys, though, like I say, it was the best match of the night. Um, Lawler so, is your best example, isn't it? Lawler is your best yeah. example. Until fucking 1990, what, three? No yes. one knew who he was. Outside Memphis, did they, really? They didn't. I didn't know. I'd never heard of him. I'd never heard of him until fucking uh, King of the Ring 93, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I mean, he'd been places and done little bits and bobs, but... You know, he was just, he was a local boy. He didn't need to travel. What's the fucking point? Uh, And if this chap that you're talking about, old grizzled dude, might have been around, you know, central states since fucking the war. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, no, so, yeah, we're going to the match. So the tie-up, fucking, yeah, Leonard gets him to, Leonard's the face. uh, So, yeah, the young lad. So he gets him to the ropes. There's a clean break. Um, Fucking, they go to tie-up again. Uh, Lewis, the heel, gives him a single leg takedown, but he gets kicked off. Boom. Fucking, uh, they go to tie up again. This time, Leonard gives him a single leg takedown. He kicks him off that time. You know, bit of a separation going in there. So they're fucking back to square one. Um, then, uh, yeah, they'll finally tie up again. Leonard takes his head. Uh, the heel shoots Leonard off. Uh, gives... Gives him a tackle, but, like, no one fucking budges. Uh, Leonard runs against the ropes, comes back, tackles him again, no one budges. Hits the ropes again, fucking beautiful crossbody. Uh, literally, like, he just gets a one count because the fucking ref's, like, you know, almost in another fucking town. It's fucking that far <laughs> away. <laughs> so uh, by the time the referee gets there, he's fucking, you know, he's kicked out. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> they tie up again. And then Lewis, uh, like the heel, just grabs the arm, starts working on the arm. Uh, and then it's pretty much like it's arm work. They get into the rope, so there's a break. And they do like a knuckle lock. And Lewis uh, trips him up. Um, 
it's looking quite even as they get back up and then Lewis cuts them off uh, and then he's back on the arm. It's like all arm work now by the heel. Uh, Leonard keeps trying to fight back, but he's not having fucking much of it. Um, but yeah, it's all arm work. Um, <clears throat> Leonard finally does fight back and gives him a really good backdrop, uh, gets the two count on that. Then there's a run spot where Leonard tackles him. Lewis sleeps and then he hits him with a backbreaker as he comes back. Um, and then he's uh, back on top. And then there's a, after he's hit him with a backbreaker, he gives him a double leg takedown and then puts him in a Boston Crab and then um, taps out from the Boston Crab. But it was a pretty simple match. Uh, young Leonard didn't really have a whole lot of offense, but he didn't get totally shit on, you know, he got some stuff in. And it, I think it was, a, I've even put here as a perfect opener. It was like, it wasn't a total squash, but it was probably 75%, like, you know, to the heel. Um, but I can't really fault it. Like, two guys I'd never heard of. It looked really good. The crowd were into it. And the announcer was doing a fucking splendid job putting them over. But, yeah, I can't really... Would you, would you say that the old boy, you know, you said the grizzled veteran, what was his name? Uh, Lewis, uh, fucking Gene, Gene Lewis. Gene Lewis. Could, could you tell that he'd, he'd been around and he'd fucking, you know, knows what he's doing? Yeah, well, both of them looked like decent, um, but yeah, you could. I mean, he was he was like a lot older as well. You could tell that, you know, like just by his age, like he, you know, he was a lot older than the other guy, than Leonard. Yeah, um, I like doing these kind of things because you, you can then stick Gene Lewis into YouTube and see what you find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the thing about it as well. Like, especially doing these fucking like territories because obviously when it's a wrestler i mean obviously if it's a wrestler that i've not heard of that you choose for like the tag teams thing like that state patrol and stuff like that we always learn about new people doing that but territories you learn even more because you don't know who the fuck's going to pop up here so oh, no, um, and, and there's not normal you know sometimes when we pick an episode there's not always match listings or anything you just think like, I, I went purely off a picture for this one because there was no information at all it just said nwa st lewis wrestling but it was Bob Orton's face, and I thought, ah, oh, sound, that'll do. Yeah. yeah. Got Bob Orton, you know, I like Bob Orton. So. Yeah. But, yeah. Gene yeah. Lewis it is. I've written that down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to investigate. Cool. Um, also, also, that fucking Leonard, I wouldn't mind knowing what happened to him, to be fair, because he was like a rookie, and this would have been the start of his career, I should imagine, yeah. Tim Leonard. I imagine he turned out to be fucking someone that we see on a regular basis, we just don't fucking yeah. know him. What was oh, his fucking, name? He's on SmackDown now, isn't he? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he's fucking Jay Uso, really. What was his name? Someone, what, Leonard? Tim Leonard. Tim Leonard, right. Yeah. There we go. Right, okay. So, uh, yeah, after the opener, there's a, uh, they go to a Ric Flair promo, just basically talking about his upcoming match with Dusty, um, which was a pretty cool promo, but, you know, it's Flair in it, so, yeah. Just promoting that one with Dusty coming up. And then the next match. Well, yeah, this was wank. This was uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was really um, not, not so much excited about this second match. It was like a woman's tag match, and I didn't really have high hopes for it. But after the opener, I thought, ah, oh, fucking cracking little show this could be. But this, you see, this one, right, this match, <coughs> it's kind of... It's hard to explain, but right. So basically, it's Carol Summers and Jill Fontaine, no, against Joyce Grable. Oh yeah, yeah, I know Joyce Grable. Uh, and Wendy Richter. Obviously, we know Wendy Richter. So that's the tag. Uh, Joyce and Wendy are the heels. Now, I don't know who the other two were, but the best way I can summarize this match was that like. A lot of the stuff they'd done in it, like, in theory, it was good. But I feel like they had the wrong people trying to execute it, if you know what I mean. Because I just don't think, I don't know how good or, or how experienced the faces were. But it felt like they weren't up to the level of the heels. And that's how it looked to me. Like, you know what I mean? And we've all, we've I mean, all been there. Josh Grable was a well-established, you know, Almost legendary women's wrestling name, 
uh, yeah. Wendy Richards at that point, much as she might have been newer, she still won a Moolah, isn't she? Yeah, and the other, and two, I'm sure, were, the other two, I'm sure, were Moolah's girls because everybody came from there, didn't they? But yeah, but I mean, Grable, you could tell in this match, she was like, she looked head and shoulders above everyone else. She looked fucking like convincing. She looked like she could kill the general. The general sort of thing. You are. She was the general. Oh, definitely, yeah. So, um, I mean, I've not wrote a whole lot from it, but we, we'll do a summers from the face team and Grable will start, do some tech. Uh, Grable will get to the ropes and then there's a clean break. Uh, I've even put here, Grable will looks impressive. Like, she looks like she, you know, legit. Uh, Rick, Richter comes in um, and then Summers takes control of Richter. Uh, Richter cuts her off at some point, I think by the hair or something like that. Um, Tags Grable back in. Oh, yeah. So, like, Summers looked a bit fucking not that competent, like, really. Um, and she's in there with Grable now. So, Grable fucking... Summers whips Grable to the corner, but Grable switches it. Now... <laughs> I don't know what the fuck Summers was attempting here. Whether it was like, it might have been like trying to do like an up and over out the corner, but she jumped up. Well, it's kind of funny because she she got whipped. I don't know what the fuck she was going on here. Right? Wait, you have to fucking try to envision this. So, she, like, she gets whipped. Now, I don't know if she's getting whipped to the ropes or to the corner, but to me, it looked like she was getting whipped to the ropes and... On the way to the rope, she changed her mind and changed direction and started running to the corner instead. So, uh, <laughs> like mid-flight. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it looked like. So she she takes a different direction. It's almost like the fucking sat-nav was like, turn round or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Make a U-turn where possible. So, um, fucking, <laughs> so that's what she done. She runs to the corner, goes for the up and over, Puts a foot on the bottom rope, goes to put one on the second rope, and just takes a back bump in the corner. Um, so oh, she's fucking, so she totally like fucked something up, totally slipped off the ropes and landed on her ass or whatever. And then Grable just goes up to her and puts her in a fucking chin lock. Um, yeah, yeah. As, as, as chin lock. Like, Everything will yeah. be all right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, she's got the uh, chin lock on. I've put. Like WTF, what the fuck? Um, <laughs> there's heat on Summers now, um, and then they put Summers in in the uh, trio woe. Uh, Rick, they're giving her some kicks and stuff. Um, oh, I've even put fucking rotten in capital letters here. We're not even at the end of the match. Um, <laughs> then it skips some. It goes to like a commercial of some kind. And then he comes back in, and Fontaine's in. Uh, Fontaine looks all right at this point. I put like I've put she looks like flashy and quite crisp. So the better one of the two, I'd have thought. Like judging by this match, um, like so. There's a point now where Fontaine, like one of the faces, runs and misses a splash onto Richter. So she's on the floor. Grable comes in. She misses a splash on Fontaine. Like she rolls out the way. And then fucking Summers runs in, misses a splash on Grable. Uh, and then the heels whipped into each other. Uh, yeah, this was like a pretty decent spot. The heels whipped into each other. Uh, they do a do -si do So it looks like the heels are in control because they do -si do Then they do a double drop kick on the faces, but they move out the way. So they take like a double bump kind of thing, which looked, looked all right. Um, Yeah, they missed the drop kicks. Then there's two catapults from uh, Richter, like, you know, slingshots. Two of them, not into the buckles, just literally, like, so fucking. Uh, land yeah. land, like. You are. You land wherever you land, kind of thing. Yeah, literally taking a front bump, just fucking, you know, going up and down right in your front. So there's two catapults. Then um, I've put lands on. I don't know what the fuck, but there's a... I don't know what the fuck I wrote here. There's two catapults anyway on Richter. 
Um, I think was it Rick? I think. Uh, let me. I've just wrote it a bit backwards here, trying to fit. There's like two catapults from some fucker on some fucker, but um, <laughs> lands on a. I've put lands on. Oh yeah, it's Fontaine actually. I think. Um, yeah, I think it's uh. Because I've put lands on Richter's knees, just Fontaine. I don't know. Something's fucking guining. But I think it's Richter that actually took the two catapults. I don't know. It's a bit of a schmoz at this point, to be fair. Um, hang on. Where the fuck are we? Just read the fucking back of it. Actually, I think what guined was... It was Wendy Richter doing the catapults on the face, I think, from judging it, because Richter's fucking up for the finish anyway, so she couldn't have taken them. Yeah, it must have been Richter doing the two catapults. And then the finish was actually all right. Like, Richter throws Summers over her, so it's kind of like if the face-to-face throws her, like, over her, so, like, she goes that way, almost like a backdrop, but she doesn't spin in the air. She just goes, like, up straight. And then... As she does it, Grable catches her in like a power bomb, and then like power bombs her. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah so it looked Which like the time as well would have been quite revolutionary, yeah. wouldn't it? I was just gonna say that back then you didn't really see stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, into the power bomb. So that was the finish. I put terrible match. There wasn't really a structure to it. I didn't really know what was going in and anything. Um, I just said others would have done better in that situation. Apparently it was for the women's tag titles as well. But, like, it just felt like it was fucking... Like, other four of the people, four more polished, I think, would have released. Like, just some of the spots and the sequences and that. I just think they... You know when you're on a show and, like, people are putting a match together and you think to yourself, like, they're doing too much or yeah. you know what I mean? Or why are you doing that after that? Yeah. Like it, it just kind of, that's how it felt to me. Like, you know, it just felt like they didn't have the fucking all four capabilities of doing that. Or maybe Grable was the one like that came up with it being the fucking, you know, the vet. So maybe she had too much faith in, so I don't know, but it just didn't pan out the way I think they would have wanted it to, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, so it was quite shit, to be fair. But, um, you know, shit Guan's done it sometimes. Like it is that. What it so, is, yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll move on to match number three now, which, um, well, let me just see what's going on in here. So, match number... Um, actually, yeah, I put, uh, I said my first match was my favorite one, but this one was pretty decent as well, to be fair. This is Ken Patera versus Kerry Von Eric. Oh, there we go. Um, and Kerry would have been fairly new at this point, wouldn't he? He wouldn't have been around for all that. 